free wine mechanic to my local multiplayer game Dash Bomb. It was really cool working on it, so let's go back in time and show you how I made it. But before that, let me tell you what changed in Dash Pong. Since the last devlog, I've added way too many things to list them all here and not be too boring. So let's make a very quick montage. I added tons of special modes, gravity wells, world gravity, bullet time, portals, shield special balls like big ball, small ball, square ball, bouncy ball, no bounce ball. I added a random map button, two new maps, reversed and pointy. The ability to play in asymmetry, 2v1, 3v1 for example, a game mode to change the special mode every game or every point. I completely revamped the match finished screen, I added messages to know when you approach the end of a match, special messages when you stop a goal, and special messages on goal such as dominating, scoring spree, perfect, etc. I created two shaders, one to use whatever repeating patterns I want for the maps, and another to handle the gradient on the maps. Tons of small quality of life improvements and bug fixes. I've updated the website and created a press kit and much more. Phew, that was a lot. If you want to learn more about Godot, you can get the course Learn Programming in the Godot Engine at a discount. Just use the link in the description or use the code Elliptic to get 10% off. This idea was brought to me by the community that I could work on a special mode where you give the player the ability to go back in time. This would allow you to avoid a goal or maybe get another chance at shooting. I was immediately sold on the idea and I decided to work on it live. And I did the bulk of it in about 5 hours and it disappeared. Why? I was able to add the feature pretty fast to the player. The idea is simply to always keep the position, rotation and velocity of the player for the last 3 seconds. When you decide to rewind, you simply take those values one by one and apply them to the player. This method is far superior in my case compared to saving the inputs because I also wanted to rewind the ball and the paddle and they are rigid bodies with no player inputs of course. I won't go into the details here, if you're interested, I made a tutorial about that that on my second channel focused on Godot and tutorials. Go check it out. The most challenging thing about this feature was to take into account the paddles that were created or destroyed during the last 3 seconds when you rewind. I was able to note with a boolean at which point the paddle was destroyed, allowing me to restore it during the rewind. For the creation, I do the opposite and I destroy it at the right frame during the rewind. This is an interesting thing about game development. When you work on a new feature, it's very hard to predict everything you're going to need to code. Also, in this case, I had to change some of the structure to make sure I was able to destroy and restore the paddles, meaning the paddles are not completely destroyed right away, allowing me to restore them whenever I need. I added a cool visual effect when rewinding to make sure it's clear to the player that we are in a rewind state and they cannot input. For now, you cannot stop it, it will always rewind 3 seconds in the past. Do you think the player initiating the rewind should be able to stop it at any point? I believe not being able to makes the mechanic more interesting because it can actually put you in a bad place if you don't time your rewind correctly. Tell me what you think in the comments below. To make the rewind mechanic fairer to use, I added a 40 seconds cooldown and I also made some effects to show the player how long the cooldown is taking. I'll show you that later. Right now, it's still possible to start a rewind just after the opponent did it, so I'll probably add a cooldown between rewinds. This mechanic was quite challenging to get right, but not for the core of it, more to make it usable, meaning that we should know who initiated the rewind, that the rewind is not taking into account frames where you scored, etc etc. I think that's very interesting because you might be scared of the algorithm itself, but in reality, making it work in every situation is usually much harder than the algorithm itself. It's super important in games and in general to let the user know what's happening. No one wants to sit in front of a spinner for ages, right? In this case, I have a special effect when the rewind is active, but no information about the cooldown or the ability to use the rewind. For that, I added three things. First, a cooldown progress appears right after you're done using the rewind. It's filling up slowly during the 40 seconds cooldown, letting you know when you can use it again without being too disturbing, I believe. Then, when the rewind becomes available, 
available, a particle effect is shown, with the rewind icon and a sound effect place, giving the player both a visual and auditory indication that something happens. Then, to make sure the player knows he can use it again, I have a looping particle effect around the player. This combination of effect is enough, I believe, to let the player know what's happening. I'm now using these effects for other special modes when there's a cooldown. That way, the player instantly knows what to expect. Also, I got nominated for the Color of Indie Price. It was a great experience where I had to pitch my game in front of three people. It was pretty stressing, but I'm glad I did it. I didn't win, but the quality of the games was really impressive, so I totally understand it. Congrats to the people behind the winning games. I'm always updating the demo, so you can check it out if you're interested, and don't forget to wishlist Dashpong on Steam. See you in the next one. Bye! I can't do that. I can't do that. There's the the prompter in front. Bye.